Hey, intro programming. We're going to be doing some animation today. So we're going to learn some very new and possibly confusing things. To start off, we're going to be learning about uh, what is called active mode in processing. Before, when we made our little robot drawing, or maybe big robot drawing, depending on how uh, much effort you put into it, uh, we just typed in function names and it went from top to bottom. It just did all those things. We're going to be adding in uh, sections to our code now. Uh, they're called function definitions, and they are a special. Uh, well, we'll just we'll just show you what they look like right now. Here we go. So there's two function definitions we need to provide. One is called setup. It looks like this. Void setup. You get a pair of parentheses and then the curly brackets, also known as braces. Uh, so just to make sure you know what those are, that is the key that is probably above enter. There's like the square brackets, but you press shift, you get the curly ones. Those are braces. These are parentheses, like shift 9 and shift 0. So this is a function definition. Sort of the other side of the functions. We looked at a function like ellipse or rect. Somewhere, those are defined. And this is what a function definition looks like. Uh, this is the name of the function. And the braces sort of say this is the beginning of the definition and the end of the definition. Setup is not a function that we're going to call. Processing automatically calls it. You'll notice its, its name is bold. And that means it's a special built-in function that we're going to define, and we'll talk about what it does in a moment. OK, so that's one of our definitions. We'll do another one. Void draw. Same pattern. It's got the word void. We'll probably come back to that at a later date, but we'll just start with a void. A lot of people call these voids, in fact, although that's not really a, uh, not really accurate. Uh, but we'll just start with that for now. Um, this is technically what's called a return type, but we don't have to get into it. Uh, the name is draw. Notice it's bold. So that means it's special in some way. In other words, processing will automatically call these functions. Uh, we got some empty parens. They'll be empty for a while. Uh, eventually we'll have function definitions where there's stuff in here. Right now it's nothing there. And then braces that sort of define the beginning and end. So those are function definitions. Uh, setup is special because uh, setup happens at the beginning of the sketch. And then never again. <laughs> it just happens right at the beginning of the sketch, does whatever code is inside these braces, and it's done. A good thing that you can use for setup is the size function. And I'll put in size uh, 800, 600, for example. The draw function is a special function that happens every um, 60th of a second. So it, the draw function gets called uh, 60 times per second might be a better way to put that, or, or at least as fast as it can. Technically, the, that's called the frame rate. A frame rate can actually drop depending on what you're doing in the draw function. It's kind of like video games. If you're playing a game on a computer that's pretty slow, and it's a, a game that has a lot of 3D graphics or something, you know, you may have heard of it dropping frames, or you know, you may have played a game on a computer like that where it was very choppy and such. So that's sort of the same idea. So there's this draw function that's going to be uh, used to draw pictures, and it happens over and over and over again. It's automatically going to be repeated. So this happens throughout the sketch and is called um, uh, 60 times per second, or whatever it can achieve. It'll actually, processing will actually automate the, the frame rate for you. And once you type in these things, once you have a setup and once you have a draw, and uh, you, you will now have turned on active mode. So I'll just put that in. So once you've included setup and draw, your sketch is in active mode. So it'll be doing these uh, this repetition of the draw function over and over again, and you'll be able to do animations and interactive sketches. So that's how you get that started. All of our games we're going to make, our animations, we're going to use void setup and void draw. So let's take a look at some examples. Like what would you put in draw? Well, you know, for example, you could put an ellipse. I'll put the, oops, ellipse. There we go. I'll put an ellipse at the center of the screen and then we'll run it and see what happens. So the center of the screen, remember the center of the ellipse is the uh, x, y coordinates. So we got to put that in. 
uh, half of the width is 400 and half of the height is 300 so that's a good place to put it so it's in the middle and whatever size you want to put it at I'll make it that big. Watch what happens when I run it. You'll notice that there's not a lot of animation going on here. <laughs> in fact you probably could have just typed this piece of code and this piece of code and got the exact same sketch. But what's actually happening is before the sketch runs the setup is happening so all this happens and then once the sketch is running, it's doing that ellipse over and over and over again. In fact, it's doing it 60 times a second, drawing that ellipse. And then, you know, I can't simulate that with words because, you know, I'm not fast enough. But that's happening. It really, really is happening. However, because it's, um, you know, not changing, like that ellipse is still drawn at the same place, it's still the same size, then we're not going to see any animation. So. We got the right structure, but there's a little bit more we need. Now we have to make it change from one frame to the next. So what we're going to do is learn how to use variables. Variables will uh, replace these hard-coded numbers, and then we can vary them or change them from one frame to the next. And then we'll see things move. So let's put in a variable. So where do I? What is it? What does a variable look like? <laughs> what do you do? That's going to be our, our topic. So I'm going to go at the very top, just above setup. Type in variables. Uh, this is where you can define variables. You can actually define them in other places as well, but let's just stick with the basics for now and define all our variables here. So I would like to make a variable that could represent maybe the x coordinate of our ellipse, and then I would like to change it over time and see what happens. So let's do it. So I want to make a variable, just like in math, you know, call it x and all that kind of stuff. So to make a variable, you have to do two things. So first of all, you have to um, uh, first declare a variable, and that means give it a type and a name. So type is basically uh, what kind of information does it hold? And the name is just what you're going to call it, so you can refer to it. But if you are not sure, uh, you know, are there some rules around this? Then basically, uh, you're just going to use letters and numbers to give it names. You can't use like hashtag or ampersand or something like that. And you can't and you can't start with a number. So the rules around naming is uh, make sure you only use letters and numbers and it can't start with a number. So that's the rules around the names. Note that you can't use spaces either. So a, a variable name can contain no spaces. Oh, I guess it could also include uh, underscores as well. So I'll put that in. Letters, <laughs> numbers, and underscores. So, like that. Just like, yeah. Oh, and I guess I could use dashes as well. Wow, there's actually a little bit. <laughs> dashes um, like this. Oh, it's basically a minus sign and underscores. You can use all those things in a variable name. Oh, wow, variables. So, what does all that look like? So, first you type the the type, you, you insert, or the word type is unfortunately uh, multiple meanings in the, the English language. So I will first write the type, and these are the ones you can choose from. So uh, you can choose from int for integers, float for decimal numbers, like 1.5, and you can choose uh, boolean for true and false. And there's actually some more ones, but we're going to focus on ints today, so let's just do with that. Notice it turns orange. INT. And then I'll give the name of my variable x. And then a semicolon, just like most things in, at the end of a line. So there is our first variable. So it's a number. Uh, it represents a, an unknown number, just like in math. But we're going to insert it at a certain place. First, we've got to give it a default ver a value. So I'll say in the setup, I'll just give it the value of x equals 400. Remember, the setup happens at the beginning of the program. So when I run this, it will 
uh, make the size and then initialize or just give a value to my variable. So x will become 400. And then in my draw function, I'm going to put an x here. So instead of being drawn always at 400, it'll be drawn at wherever x is. Now, that hasn't really changed a lot. If I run this sketch, it's still going to be at the center. It's not, I'm not changing x, but we can change x, and I'll show you how to do it. You can say uh, maybe add or subtract to x every frame, and because draw happens over and over and over again, if we change x inside of the draw function, then that change will be applied every time it happens. Those are called frames. So every frame, there's 60 of them in a second, we can maybe subtract or add to x. So let's do it. I'm going to say uh, x equals x plus um, 5. So this is not an equation, just so you know. Uh, I'll zoom in, actually, maybe, if I can figure out. There we go. I'm going to zoom way in. Uh, this looks like an equation, and, you know, kind of an impossible equation. There's no number that plus itself, uh, uh, itself plus 5 is equal to itself. I suppose infinity is the only number that works there. But um, that's it's not an equation. We're not having a balanced, you know, left side, right side. This is an assignment. And so what we're saying is uh, we're going to take the value of x, and we're going to assign it the value of whatever it was plus 5. So if it was 400, after running this code, it would be 405. The next time, it would become 410, 415, 420. So you can imagine that if that happens 60 times in a second, it's going to increase really quickly. And in a little over a second, it'll be off the screen. So let's see what happens if we run that. Let's zoom out and run our sketch. And animation has occurred huzzah so what we saw was this ellipse moving but uh, it looks a little bit odd because we have now many ellipses it looks actually kind of interesting like we have like some kind of uh, tube here with the uh, corrugations along the edge so what happened is that uh, we drew a first circle and then we increased its x by 5, and then draw happened again. So we drew another circle, and then we increased x by 5, and then we loop it again. So draw happened over and over again, and each time drew a new circle. But the old circles didn't get erased, so we just drew on top of it. And you can use this to your advantage, like that's kind of a cool looking thing. Maybe it's what you would actually want to do. But also, if you want to make it look like it's just a circle moving, and the previous frames get erased, here's how you would do that. At the beginning of the draw function, I'm going to put background and then a color. You guys remember doing this. I think 200 is the default color. And watch what happens. I'll just run it, and you'll see the circle moves across. It's a little bit choppy, but uh, it looks fine, and we'll, we'll improve that later on. There it goes. It looks like it's just a circle that's kind of moving across the screen. So what's happening exactly in this? So what happens is it just goes top to bottom, just like before. So first we declare a variable. We say, hey, we're going to make a variable that stores integers. We'll call it x. Then the setup happens, and it happens at the beginning of the sketch. So we make the size uh, the, of the window and make the window. And then we also um, initialize a variable. We'll give it its initial value, its first value. Then the draw function happens. And remember, the draw function is going to happen over and over and over again because it's a special function in processing, and that's what it does. So first, we'll draw the background, which, remember, it doesn't actually draw it in the background. It covers the whole screen in this particular color. So cover in gray. Then we'll draw a circle. It'll be at 400 because that's the initial value. And then we'll add 5 to x. So it was 400, but it'll be assigned the value of 400 plus 5. So it's now 405. Then it goes back to the beginning of the draw function, and it does it all over again. So it does background, which erases the previous frame. All the stuff on the screen gets wiped out by background 200. Then it's going to draw a circle at 405, and it's a little bit to the right, and then and all the other things are still the same. And then we'll get it to draw, oh, sorry, then we'll get it to increase x again by 5. So it'll be 410. And it goes back to the beginning of the draw function. It does this. So there's this kind of cycle where it does background ellipse increase x, background ellipse increase x, background ellipse increase x. It just kind of goes and goes and goes and goes. 
uh, for as long as you want it to go. Uh, as soon as you press stop is when that actually stops. It doesn't stop when the circle goes off the screen. The circle's still continuing. It's going off your monitor now. It's going off into the right. X is still getting bigger and bigger and bigger, even though we don't see it. Still keeping track of that. Eventually it'll stop because the number will exceed the size of what can be stored in an int. It can only go so large. But that's not really our concern. That would be many days from now. So if we let it run, it would be fine for days and days and days. Okay, so uh, there we go. There's some basics about animation. So here's some things for you to try. So I'd like you guys to think about uh, maybe making uh, some animations where you have a circle that goes from left to right across the screen. And also make an ellipse that goes that travels from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And last but not least, have an ellipse that's in the middle of the screen that starts off small and then grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then do the opposite. Have a giant ellipse starting off at the beginning that's maybe you know even bigger than the screen. And have it get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So there's your... Uh, uh, four tasks to try. I'll write them down here just to summarize. So um, now you try. <laughs> so first uh, make uh, an ellipse travel from the left of the screen to the right all the way across and it can keep going. It's okay if it goes, you know, it doesn't stop. We haven't learned how to make it stop yet. That's gonna be for another lesson. Uh, and make an ellipse travel from the top of the screen to the bottom. Uh, it might be interesting to also make it go backwards as well, from right to left, from bottom to top. I won't make that as an activity, but if you are interested in trying that, just to make sure you're understanding what's happening, give it a shot. Uh, also, we'll make an ellipse um, grow from a tiny uh, ellipse at the center into a big ellipse. I'm kind of running out of space there. Just make it grow, grow, grow. And you know, you might be wondering, wait, you didn't tell me how to do that. But remember, a variable can be put anywhere. Could be put here, could be put here, it could even be put here, on here too. Woohoo! So you can stick variables wherever you want. That might have given away the game, but that's okay. Uh, also, make an ellipse shrink from a giant ellipse to a tiny one. And you know what, you can't, we don't know how to stop it yet. So if it like suddenly starts growing bigger again, that's okay too. So just get it to shrink, basically. Make an ellipse grow, make an ellipse shrink. You got it. So that's what you're gonna try today. And uh, we'll see how you do by the end of class. Thanks everybody.